Hey everybody, some gadget guy here with a quick question for my audience members out there. When you're setting up a new phone, specifically a new Android phone, what is the first thing that you do to that new phone? What is the first app you load or the service you sign into? I'm really curious to see what your answers are going to be to this question. My mom finally got herself her first smartphone. She uh, she was rocking an iPad and a texting phone for a little while, and she went and got herself a handy little Galaxy S5. So now she's you know, it was a light speed improvement in her <laughs> mobile telephony capabilities. But it got me thinking, every time I have set up a new Android device, I kind of go into autopilot. I, I know what accounts I'm going to sign into, I know what apps I want to download, but trying to talk my fairly tech savvy mom through setting up her new phone, it really made me stop and think about what it is that I do with my phones. And what are some of the things that I wish other people had told me when I first made my transition back over to Android back in the Android 2.2 days? But when my mom was setting up her new phone, the thing I told her to check out first was Android Device Manager. And this is actually something I wish Google would call this something else, because Device Manager is a very boring and staid thing to call an app which could totally save your butt in the event that you lose your awesome new smartphone. Or you maybe lose a person you care about who might be attached to a smartphone that is signed into the device manager service. As just a quick walk through device manager, device manager is the app that Google has provided us for keeping track of our phones, locking our phones remotely, and then wiping out the device if they were to fall into nefarious hands. Gonna log into my account right quick. You don't get to see my password, silly YouTubes. This is the device manager screen, and from here we can see what phones and tablets are connected to your primary Google Play account. If the device is running a fairly current version of Google Play services, you should be able to do basic controls and tracking from this screen. And it's maybe a reason why if you're managing a family of devices, say you're a parent and you've got kids with uh, Android tablets or phones out there, you should also make sure that they're signed into that primary Google Play account so that you're also able to do things like track the phone or tablet if it gets lost or stolen, or if your child gets lost or stolen. I, of course, I'm zoomed out, so you can see I'm sort of in the greater LA area. I didn't want to show you exactly what block I live on. But from this panel, we can see that my HTC One M8 was recently located, was located about a minute ago, and this is where it currently is. It's residing in Los Angeles. And from this screen, I can ring the device, I can lock the screen with a new passcode, or if I'm just worried about any information on that phone and I don't think I'm gonna get that phone back, I can just wipe the whole thing clean. Okay, so here's my trusty HTC One M8. Let's say I accidentally lost it. Maybe it's stuck in some couch cushions. Uh, the ringer is actually turned all the way off on this phone. For most of my phones, I tend to leave the ringers off because I'm usually wearing some kind of smartwatch. But I need to find this phone and I know that it's currently connected to a data connection of some kind via Wi-Fi or 4G LTE. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I know that it's connected because in in the device manager on my LG, I can see that it's been recently located. So from this screen, you can actually check out whether or not the phone is actively connected to the internet as well, if it can currently be located. But I just want it to make some noise so I can find it somewhere in my condo. I'm gonna push this little button here. Device will ring at full volume for five minutes. Press the power button to stop the ringing. I'm gonna hit ring. And there it goes, that beautiful AT&T ringtone. And we can uh, now turn it off, turn it off. And when we go through the process of trying to lock the device, we're, we're gonna get a different screen where we can enter a new password. And this can be an alphanumeric password. You can make this really, really tough. And then you can also put in a recovery message. You can give someone information, say so a good Samaritan happens to find your phone. They try to unlock it. They're gonna be presented with an information on how they can get the device back to you. You can leave them a phone number, or an email address, you know, some way of getting in contact with you. So it's a really handy way of sort of preventing them from getting into the device and then also increasing the likelihood that maybe you'll get it back someday. And you might be wondering why I've got a Windows tablet here on the desk. Well, I'm talking about an Android feature, and that's because if you lose your phone or tablet and you don't have another Android device handy to use this device manager app, you can use any modern web browser to achieve these same features, location, uh, ringing the device, locking the device, or erasing it. So even on Internet Explorer on a Windows RT tablet, we still have access to all of these features. And so all we have to do is go to google.com slash android slash device manager. And so switching back over to my HTC One, which is on and currently findable through Android Device Manager, we're going to tap on that. Now it's going to locate my device. 
Okay, and it took me just a second to locate it, but then I had to zoom way out, because again, I don't want to show you guys where I actually live. We can see when it was last located, 11.59 a.m., 11.59 a.m., so it sent an active signal to the HTC One M8, and it was able to locate it, and it says it's accurate to within 24 meters, which is pretty remarkable, considering I think this is still in airplane mode and is only connected via a Wi-Fi connection. And same thing, if we want, we can tap on ring. It's going to ring, uh, your device will ring at full volume for five minutes. We're going to hit OK. And there's that delicious AT&T ringtone sound. I'm gonna just turn that off again. So folks, this is what I told my mom to check out first. Uh, she bought her phone outright, and I, I would have felt awful if something had happened to her $650 investment in a, in a brand new smartphone, especially just for how excited she was to finally be taking that step into combining her phone and tablet and camera and all of that fun gear into one portable device. And this for me really stands as the bare minimum that you should be using to protect your gadget investment. Other people I'm sure have suggestions and please drop me some comments down below on, on what other services people are using to protect and get information on lost and stolen devices. For example, on my wife's phone, we're currently using Cerberus and I think that's a terrific app for expanding on some of these features by also doing things like controlling the front camera. You know, it'll take a picture of someone if they try and log into the device too many times and they get the password wrong. And outside of security, please let me know what other services and what other apps do you automatically go to on your Android device? Because I'd love to share some of those suggestions with the community and I'd also love to be able to tell my mom what other services she should check out. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching my videos, sharing my videos, subscribing to my channel, uh, dropping me all those amazing comments. I want to hear a little chatter on this one because I'd love to know what you guys are currently using. Hit Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next review.